6 dB per bit is the signal to noise ratio that you get from analog to digital converters and that's going to be derived here. The ADCs will be either mid-rise or mid-step, it doesn't matter. They're n bit per sample ADCs, linear, a sine wave input will be used and the quantization noise will be modeled as a uniformly distributed random variable. And the idea is that the signal to noise ratio per bit that you get out of an analog to digital converter increases for based on the number of bits used in the sample, meaning an 8-bit ADC would give you 8 times 6 or 48 dB signal to noise ratio at the output. This is the situation we're given and what we're trying to show. So the signal is going into an ADC and it's being limited in amplitude level, S tilde of T, between minus A and A. The sine input applied to a 1 ohm resistor has amplitudes between plus A and minus A. With an n bit A to D converter there are 2 to the n levels and so the difference between the levels would be 2a divided by 2 to the n minus 1. If there are 2 to the n levels, then there's 2 to the n minus 1 ranges of, uh, are, are the widths of each of the quantization intervals, and that's equation 1. A model the ADC quantization noise as a uniformly distributed random variable so that if S of T is the input signal into the ADC in both cases then statistically these two cases are equivalent where you limit to the amplitude level based on quantization to fixed levels or you just add a noise that's randomly distributed between minus delta over 2 and delta over 2 meaning if delta is the difference between the amplitude levels then delta is the width of each level and the noise is uniformly distributed over that interval. If this is delta then the area has to be 1 so this is 1 over delta. And it's the probability density function of the noise, the random variable. So capital N which equals capital N of T, it's really a random process but if we're interested in one sample point then we'll just treat this as a random variable N. Again, a sine wave input between amplitude minus A and plus A. And I've looked at trying to improve what goes on at the levels, meaning it going into more detail won't really help with the explanation, whether it's mid-rise or, or mid-step, and we look at the amplitude levels in here and really what goes on at the end points. Because once N gets large, then what happens at the ends and what happens at a mid-rise or a mid-step doesn't matter. It doesn't affect the net result which will be 6 dB per bit. So as n goes to infinity we want to show that the signal to noise ratio in dB increases at a rate of 6 dB per bit. And the solution. So the signal to noise ratio in dB would just be 10 times the log and base 10 of the signal to noise ratio, the two powers. 10 log and base 10 of PS over PN, where PS is the power in the signal and PN is the power in the noise. And the signal power PS would be from a sine wave of amplitude minus A to plus A applied to a 1 ohm resistor. It would be the RMS value A over root 2 squared applied to a 1 ohm resistor and you would get A squared divided by 2. As far as the units go, it's just commonly used to use 1 and um, I almost regret putting a, an R here and a 1 here because then you wonder what happened to the other units, but it's uh, it doesn't gain much in that the noise is also going to be applied to a 1 ohm resistor. So it might be the signal power with respect to a particular resistance and the noise power with respect to a particular resistance. However, the signal power PS is A squared over 2. From the probability density function of the noise, which I redrew up here, the mean value of n is the expected value of n, and it will be zero if we work it out. The average value of the noise is zero, the mathematical expectation of n, that random variable. But the power in the noise would be the expected value of the noise squared applied to the resistor, meaning the average voltage 
the the average value of the square of the voltage applied to the resistor again that one ohm resistor but this uh, the mathematical expectation of the noise would be the mathematical expectation of the random variable squared and working out that mathematical expectation is the integral from minus infinity to plus infinity of n squared p sub capital N of n dn equation 4 and equation 2 and 3 but continuing with that evaluation the integral over the entire interval is only going to be non-zero from minus delta over 2 to delta over 2 so these limits are changed to minus delta over 2 to plus delta over 2 n squared and then the probability density function is 1 over delta dn working out this integral it would be the integral of n squared over delta would be n cubed over 3 delta evaluated between the limits delta over 2 and minus delta over 2 those limits are evaluated here delta over 2 and minus delta over 2 1 third over delta delta cubed delta over 2 cubed and this, this is minus 1 1 1 over 3 delta minus delta over 2 cubed the minuses will cancel or well they'll cancel so that you'll get delta cubed over delta delta cubed over delta which is just delta squared and you get in the denominator will be 24 and 24 but there's two of them so you get 12. So the power in the noise will be delta squared divided by 12 where delta is the width of the quantization interval. So putting that into from equation 12 putting these both together now the signal to noise ratio in dB will be 10 log and base 10 of PS over PN and from equation 3 PS is a squared over 2 and from equation 5 Pn is delta squared over 12. So we put a squared over 2, delta squared over 12. We end up getting 6 and a squared over delta squared. Then delta is 2a over 2 to the n minus 1. That was the width of, delta is the width of uh, the quantization interval for the, for the levels between minus a and plus a and there's 2 to the n levels and so by fence post uh, argument there's 2 to the n minus 1 amplitude uh, or ranges of um, inter uh, regions of width delta in that quant in that a, a to d converter output in fact this minus 1 won't matter um, when n is large but putting delta in from the formula in here we get 2a over 2 to the n minus 1 squared. The um, the 2 to the n um, would be evaluated before the minus 1 but I've kept the 2 to the n in brackets just as a reminder that it, it's not minus 1 in the exponent it's just a minus 1. Going from this line to this line we get 2 squared which is 4 so we get 6 over 4 there's an a squared and an a squared and then what's in the denominator here 2 to the n minus 1 squared will be up in the numerator then separating out the this log over 4 or sorry the 6 over 4 is a um, can be taken out of the uh, log product of the the log of the product is the sum of the individual elements and the uh, the a squareds cancel then we're left with this and then the two in the exponent can be brought in front of the log so we get 20 log and base 10 of 2 to the n minus 1 and 10 log and base 10 of 3 halves then approximately when n is large n is 8 uh, or if n is 16 then 2 to the 16 is going to be 65,536 minus 1 is 65,535 so if n is large this can be approximately 20 log and base 10 of 2 to the n then the n can be brought in front of the log so that we get what's left is log and base 10 of 2 so we can write 20 log and base 10 of 2 times n plus log 10 3 over 2 and 20 log and base 10 of 2 is 6.02 dB but again the, the way 3 dB is 3.01 this 6.02 dB per bit is approximately 6 dB 
and consequently we've derived what we're looking for and that is the signal to noise ratio in dB at the output of the quantizer of n bits, an n bit linear quantizer, is going to be approximately 6n. And there's a residual term here, but the important part here is that when n is large, then you get 6 dB per bit. In terms of dynamic range of practical systems, a landline telephone, as I've said before, not a pay phone, uh, not a cell phone, but a landline telephone like a pay phone, they, the, your voice is quantized with, lin with A to D converters, mind you, although they're not linear, if, essentially, uh, if they were linear and they were 8 bits per sample, then you get approximately 48 dB per bit out of the, out of the a to D converter. That's the signal to noise ratio on a landline telephone, meaning the difference in amplitude would be 48 dB between the loudest sound you could hear on the telephone and the quietest sound. And another example would be compact disc audio, which does use linear A to D converters, and they use 16 bits per sample with 6 dB per bit would give us 60, 96 dB dynamic range from compact disc audio, meaning 96 dB between the loudest sounds and the quietest sounds, which as I've mentioned before is an astonishingly large dynamic range. And uh, so that summarizes where the 6 dB per bit comes from. Thank you.